the headlines now on Dayline. Uh, the government is facing an increasing backbench revolt over the Chancellor's plans to tax domestic fuel. The government's also under pressure from rising jobless figures being announced later today. Britain is demanding that France orders an immediate end to the recent attacks by French trawlermen on imported British fish. And it's thought the future of the BBC's chairman, Marmaduke Hussey, is being discussed at a meeting of the corporation's governors, which is underway in London. And a look at the weather for this afternoon. Snow showers in the far north of Scotland will be drifting in gale force winds. A bitterly cold feel to the afternoon. Further south, less in the way of showers and bright weather too. Further south still, England will see a little light drizzle. Beyond 2000 is next. We'll be back at 11. The headlines on Dayline. The government is under pressure this morning over joblessness and its plans to put VAT on domestic fuel. Britain will today demand that France orders an immediate end to the recent attacks by French trawlermen on imported British fish. And the future of the BBC's chairman, Marmaduke Hussey, is likely to be top of the agenda at a meeting of the corporation's governors later today. On Beverly Hills 90210, the spark is lit and the romance is begun. But not everybody is pleased. I really don't want you getting involved with the money. Oh, it's a little too late for that, Dad. What do you mean? What do you mean? Life of the class of 96 also has its ups and downs. But playing hard and working hard are what it's all about at Havenhurst. Two first-rate shows coming your way Saturday at 6 and 7 on Sky One. This is Sky News, a part of the British Sky Broadcasting Network. The government under pressure on rising jobless and the budget heat tax. Will Hussey quit the BBC? Governors meet on the chairman's future. Aid convoys roll for two Bosnian towns, but still no relief for Srebrenica. Good morning, this is Dayline. It's 10 o'clock on Thursday, 11 o'clock on Thursday, the 18th of March. I'm Stephen Cole. Good morning, I'm Heather Scott. The government is facing a growing backbench rebellion over Chancellor Norman Lamont's plans to add VAT to domestic fuel. The Social Security Minister, Anne Widdicombe, has offered to meet worried Tories to try and calm fears that the elderly and poor will be badly hit by the measure. The government also looks set to come under renewed pressure over jobs with the release of new unemployment figures in half an hour. It's thought they could show a jump of around 60,000, putting the total well over 3 million. For the Social Security Secretary, the row over the new heating tax is one extra budget-related problem to argue about with the Chancellor. The fear that the VAT base would be widened was repeatedly and graphically raised during the election campaign, and Labour are accusing the government of a flagrant breach of faith in giving what was taken as a commitment to leave VAT alone and now imposing the tax on heating fuel. But it's the anxiety and, in some cases, anger that it's aroused on the Tory benches that poses the more serious threat to ministers. The potential rebels fear that the increase in the cost of fuel will create a new poverty trap, hitting people who are on low income but who fall outside the benefits net. The junior Social Security Minister, Anne Widdicombe, has clearly not helped by saying in a radio interview this morning that existing mechanisms will protect vulnerable groups. And the Conservative revolt on behalf of the old and needy is gathering momentum. I hope at the end of the day that it isn't always that you actually have to vote against, but that the government might recep be receptive to the concern that people like myself feel on such a matter, which is going to impact on the lives and the quality of the lives of many hundreds of thousands of people, perhaps millions of people in this country. And social security specialists at Westminster are likely to press for specific payments to meet the needs of those directly affected. We'd look at schemes whereby we would be paying uh, single payments regularly throughout the year for all those groups who are vulnerable to this particular price increase. So it would be targeted beyond those who are deemed to be poor because they claim income support. 
pressure there on the government that will be considerably heightened shortly when it's thought the employment secretary will have to try and explain away a further sharp rise in the jobless total. Albeit expected, it's still deeply unwelcome. But there can be little doubt that the new heating tax is a public relations disaster. Although the sums of money are relatively small in relation to the budget's overall figures, it is causing problems within the already troubled Conservative Party. And it shows the government in a clumsy and uncaring light. Peter Spencer, Sky News. Well, joining us now on the line, live oh, down the line from Westminster, is Peter Spencer, our political correspondent. You talk about a public relations disaster. What will the Social Security Minister, Anne Whittakin, be able to tell MPs uh, to reassure them? Well, what she will try to tell them on the basis of what she'd said so far is the fact that there is already a very considerable net of Social Security benefits of one kind or another, and that will solve the problem. But I don't actually think it will satisfy them. And I think what they will call for is some sort of specifically targeted set of benefits and additional assistance, particularly for those who are in a new poverty trap, or that's the word that they're using, people who maybe fall just outside the ambit of the uh, social security benefits, but who are still on low incomes and who therefore will be particularly hard hit. Do you think that, though, that those measures will be forthcoming? I mean, it, it appears that, uh, th you know, they're not going to give any extra. Well, they didn't plan to give any extra, but I mean, if you if you ask for me for my hunch, I would guess that very likely there would be some concession made simply because if we are talking about a targeted set of proposals for a rel for a relatively narrow band of people, albeit people who are particularly vulnerable, then the sums I think the the financial sums would be would would very much outweigh the political cost of leaving things as they are. You remember that the government has had to try to sell a particularly unfriendly budget to the nation on the grounds that the nation's been living beyond its means and to a reasonable extent it would seem that they are or they they perceive themselves as having some success in getting their message across and they don't want to destroy it over one relatively small input to it well what's likely to be adding to their woes is the unemployment figures that's not going to be helped by these budget proposals i mean the, the people who are likely to be unemployed no particularly not the point is made that the in the budget there are specific measures aimed at getting more job opportunities and job training for perhaps a hundred thousand people and what is anticipated from today's figures is a hike of perhaps sixty thousand people today alone and so simply on this latest set of figures we're expecting to see just about all the immediate tangible benefits from the budget wiped out at a stroke and so the government does have a tremendous and ongoing and constantly rising problem over this their argument is of course that what they're doing is setting in train a long-term recovery which will in the end generate jobs but in the short term of course it will generate not a great deal and it has to be said that one of the last things to pick up at the end of recovery from recession is unemployment so things are going to be pretty bad for the government and the nation for some time to come peter spencer thanks very much indeed for joining us and while the political fallout from the chancellor's announcement of vat on domestic fuel continues to reverberate around westminster two power companies have announced price cuts as from april the first london electricity say they'll reduce bills by two percent Midland Electricity go two points better, announcing price cuts of 4%. The fish war between Britain and France has moved back into the political arena. The fisheries minister, David Curry, is demanding an immediate end to attacks by French trawlermen on imported British fish. Mr Curry and his EC counterparts have begun a meeting in Brussels where there's expected to be a frank exchange of views. Mr Curry says he's extremely worried about the scale of French violence against British fish imports. He'll tell his French counterpart, Charles Josselin, that it must stop. He says the willful destruction of fish at a time when half the world is hungry has left people with a deep sense of revulsion. The problem has been caused by cheap Russian imports. They've pushed prices down, threatening the livelihoods of fishermen who've already been forced to reduce catches because of EC conservation measures. The French government wants a 30% increase in the minimum price for fish coming into the community and says Russian fish should be banned. Britain will reject that, insisting instead that minimum import prices and hygiene regulations be rigidly adhered to. 
the two sides are meeting in Brussels today, but so far the EC hasn't come up with any proposals. It feels the dispute is a matter for London and Paris rather than the community as a whole. Tim Needham, Sky News.